Well, it's that time of the week once again when we go out to the left coast of the United States of America and go join Michael Snyder for his culture blast. Tell you all about the movies and stuff. Mike? Hey, buddy. Yeah. It's, uh, it's yours truly from the uh, hills of Hollywood where uh, uh, the coyotes are howling and they're not howling over a bunch of good movies. It's just very, very weird. It's... Uh, uh, one of those weeks where a bunch of things come out and there are no previews for them. It's just bizarre. When the bow breaks and the disappointments room, there's your disappointment. They didn't let us see those. And uh, I didn't get a chance to see a, a, a French-Belgian animated thing that's been dubbed into English called The Wildlife. But we do have what seems to be a potential early Oscar contender called Sully. You know, an old guy directs a docudrama about another old guy and actually comes up with a damn fine film in my book. And I'm talking about Clint Eastwood, whose most recent work as a uh, movie maker has ranged from fine to pedestrian. Uh, and the subject of his latest feature film release, Sully, who is uh, airline pilot Chesley Sully Sullenberger, the guy who somehow made an emergency water landing on the Hudson River in the heart of the New York City Metroplex with over 150 people inside the plane. Big news story post 9-11, kind of raised people's spirits, and maybe uh, it didn't seem like a logical thing to make a movie about, but it turns out to work very, very well. And Tom Hanks, uh, America's sweetheart, <laughs> is just dandy as Sully, who's a quietly efficient, and thoughtful man who does his job to the best of his skills and turns into an unwilling celebrity in the wake of this miracle on the Hudson, as it was called. In this movie, we also learn that uh, uh, such a workmanlike guy with the right stuff uh, is not immune to being a target um, because there was certainly an insurance-driven investigation of the landing, despite what appeared to be total engine failure due to a flock of birds slamming into the plane. Uh, the officials question whether ditching the airplane was necessary or just needless endangerment of passengers and property when Sully could have returned to a local airport instead. So Hanks is in his comfort zone, and there are also nicely tuned performances and supporting roles by Aaron Eckhart as Sully's loyal co-pilot Jeff Skiles, Laura Linney as Sully's wife Lori, conveniently enough, and uh, from True Blood, Chris Bauer, Anna Gunn. Uh, Jerry Ferrara from uh, Entourage and Michael Rappaport playing a bartender. Solid, solid stuff. And we know what happened, but Eastwood's done a spot-on recreation of this inspiring newsmaking incident and the subsequent tension over the hearings from the uh, handling of the crisis and the behind-the-scenes stuff that was going on after the landing, even when Sully and his crew were getting honored on Letterman, uh, is pretty fascinating. And man, the action before and during the splashdown was exciting to watch in IMAX, which is how we saw it. It was uh, immersive, so to speak, in the best way. I mean, we see a lot of movies based on actual events and wonder about their honesty or think of them as exploitive. Here's one about a good guy who rises to the occasion under life-threatening circumstances and saves a bunch of lives, including people on the ground who might have been in the path of the uh, crashing plane. By the way, with uh, his white hair, his slight paunch, and trimmed little mustache, Hanks would be a natural for the inevitable... Gail Gordon or Gerald McRaney biopics, or maybe The Life and Times of the Monopoly Man. Uh, I guess he's growing into these kind of roles. And do not pass go. Uh, check this out if you have a chance. Um, Kicks is a very tightly focused, creatively rendered coming-of-age story set in the East Bay, uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, mostly in the economically depressed inner-city neighborhoods of Richmond and Oakland. This is like a tough yet tender film uh, made in indie style uh, by director and co-screenwriter Justin Tipping, who was born and raised in Oakland, so he knows the turf. It's all about an odyssey undertaken by a 15-year-old kid named Brandon, played by a very impressive newcomer named Jaking Wheelery, uh, who is looking for his pricey sneakers, uh, or kicks, as they call them, uh, which are snatched by a hood in the hood. And this happens right after this poor, essentially decent kid takes all of his hard-earned cash buys the shoes from a hustler on the block, and then is jacked up for the shoes. So he's a little guy trying to, you know, cultivate swagger and impress a girl, and he thinks the sneakers are going to help him. He's, he's humiliated by losing them and the abuse he gets from these guys, uh, and so he's determined to regain what is his safety be damned. He goes on an odyssey accompanied by his two idiot pals and runs into 
trouble, trouble, and more trouble in the hood. There's a lot of great local color. There, uh, there's a, something called a sideshow. It's a pivotal, a pivotal scene in the film where uh, the people in their cars are doing the. Uh, circles in them and riding in the middle of the street and going like wild and hanging out the side of the of the automobile. Uh, it, it's kind of cool and there are, you know, really solid hip hop tunes attached to this thing that actually comment on the action. And uh, we have some actual professional actors instead of these young kids who are also in this thing. Uh, the uh, boy's adversary, Flacco, is played by an actor named Coffee Sirabo, and he's tremendous. His cruelty uh, evaporates when he gets to his home and gives the stolen shoes to his prepubescent kid. You see the warmth of the family relationship. And um, veteran actor uh, Mahershala Ali, who is in a bunch of good stuff, plays uh, the kid's uh, gun-toting, drug-dealing Uncle Marlin, who offers him some insights. It is a very, very solid debut by Justin Tipping. Uh, again, kicks, low budget, probably good on uh, video when you get a chance to see it. But, um, I, you know, I like supporting films like that. Demon is a weird, darkly funny, and ultimately frustrating horror movie set in Poland. As a young guy of Polish descent arrives from his home in England to marry his Polish girlfriend, although they've only known one another for a relatively brief time, it's kind of a hookup because the girl's brother has you know, befriended the guy, but it turns out to be the wedding from hell, as they have it at a rural fixer-upper where they're going to live, and it turns out uh, that it's where a demon from Jewish folklore, uh, a dybbuk, is lying in wait for them. So all hell breaks loose, pardon the expression, at this wedding. And there are moments that are hilarious and bizarre. And uh, the guy, Peter, who plays the uh, central character of the, uh, the man who's come to marry his girlfriend, played by an Israeli actor named Ite Tiran. And he gives a totally great performance, particularly when the possessions start happening. But it still felt so weird, like a weird amalgam of styles and genres that didn't quite hold together. Um, and even though uh, I could say that, I still thought, wow, this is not exactly your conventional run-of-the-mill horror movie. And for that, I give it a relative uh, recommendation for people who like this stuff. But yes, a lot of subtitles. And, and no, I don't think it's going to go over really well in the American market. I just can't see it being a big hit. On the other hand, when uh, movies like, uh, you know, The Disappointments Room aren't being shown to us, horror films like that, and people are willing to let the reviewer see Demon, that's going to get the attention. Okay, author, the J.T. Leroy st uh, story, is a pretty um, interesting documentary, and it's about um, a San Francisco resident named Laura Albert, who's an undeniably talented writer and has been at the center of a literary storm since it was revealed that the author of a series of acclaimed fictional books and short stories wasn't the person that he or she claimed to be. Um, over the past couple decades, Albert has uh, kind of channeled her real experiences as a teenage runaway in group homes and on the streets uh, with all the drugs and, and sex and what, whatever, all the hysteria there, into books presented as fiction and written in the first person, but the voice was supposedly that of a transgender male former teen hooker named J.T. Leroy. So she published under that name. Critics and readers assumed that J.T. was a real person, embraced the books, and then the revelation came that was it was in fact this 40-something woman, now 40-something woman. So people flipped out. I mean, people vilified Albert, and this movie is a chance for her to kind of, uh, you know, deliver her side of the story, if you will. I mean, you know, you could make a case that the Leroy character was long-form performance art or part of a tradition in, uh, in literature of pen names like Mark Twain being the pen name of Samuel Clemens or uh, George Eliot, the 19th century female author, Mary Ann Evans. But people still screamed hoax and continue to vilify her. It's crazy. So she uses um, interview footage and uh, uh, journal entries, photos, audio film, testimonials from friends. Tons of celebrities bought into this, including the likes of uh, Winona Ryder and, uh, you know, uh, I mean, Terry Gross. Uh, I mean, the Courtney Love. Uh, there were a lot of people that uh, were big fans and supported uh, Albert's creation, if you will. And this movie kind of focuses in on all of it, and I think it does a great job. The director, Jeff Furzig, um, you know, he took a little chance here to try to tell the story this way. And I thought he did a good job. And, you know, I don't have a problem with her, but here we go. The story's out there. Draw your own conclusions. 
Uh, one more documentary to mention, For the Love of Spock, a very loving uh, thing about Leonard Nimoy done by his son, actor and director Adam Nimoy. And uh, it follows Nimoy's story from uh, his early years uh, through his fame as Mr. Spock on Star Trek and all of that uh, that it entailed, his uh, family life and such. And we get a lot of intimacy from this film. And it's a very sweet and uh, moving movie. And obviously we see a lot of the various people who were involved in Star Trek interviewed and uh, it, it's a really lovely mix of biography and uh, and personal account. And I, I just, you know, I, I was I totally was moved by it. Uh, and I I've always loved Leonard Nimoy, and I think this movie is a sweet and uh, and delightful uh, kind of uh, love note to him from his son. And it's something we can all enjoy. Quickly, London Road is a very weird uh, musical. It's a musical based on true events. Uh, that occurred in 2006 in Ipswich, a London, uh, a um, pardon me, a British town, where uh, five women's bodies were discovered. And for some reason, the uh, there was a stage production that the National Theatre, uh, based on this incident, that turned the accounts of the people who lived there into a musical. Now, none of these songs are particularly hummable, uh, but you do get actors of the uh, weight and importance and and talent of Olivia Coleman and Tom Hardy in this movie version of the film. And I've never seen anything quite like it, and I don't think it's going to be uh, to everyone's taste, and it's pretty damn dark. But I thought London Road was a must-see for, for me, uh, not only because I was fascinated by what they were trying to do here, but also because there's a lot of talent involved. And, and again, when I say musical, there's a lot of talk singing going on. But uh, I was riveted by London Road. I don't know that you'll be, but, uh, you know, for me, it's the sort of exciting change of pace that I need after the conventional Hollywood crap. And finally, a foreign film called Come What May, set in May of 1940. During the German invasion, there's a little village in the north of France um, where people are uh, driven out or decide to, say, to stay, depending upon the, their desire to protect their land or their lives. So this is a movie about that. Uh, diaspora, uh, this exodus, as the villagers uh, leave. And among the people that leave includes a German kid whose father was not on board with the Nazis and moved into this French town. And uh, the kid comes along with everybody else. And we also see uh, various uh, other um, people who were involved in it, including uh, a soldier for the Allies played by Matthew Reese, uh, uh, Matt, uh, uh, Matthew Rice, rather, uh, from uh, The Americans. It's, it's kind of not, it's not a great film. I mean, it's interesting to see Matthew Rice as the Scottish soldier amidst this, trying to return to England in the middle of the war zone. And it's an interesting story, but I thought it could have been a more exciting film. Anyway, come what may, I guess for fanciers of World War II memorabilia and such. And that's it on movies. What do you do? What do you got? I, do you do I have really nothing except an apology to you because I, uh, I you mentioned a show last week and I thought you were mentioning another one, which I had seen, which was terrible, and I can't even remember what it was. But uh, you, you mentioned uh, the uh, show uh, You're the Worst. And we watched it, and we watched all the seasons, and uh, it's a good show. You know. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, uh, it's unlike any um, comedy on television, really. It's, it's as if Friends were, were vile, if Friends were self-destructive to the maximum, if Friends were the most selfish, even more so than they were on the original show. It, it has very, uh, it's very close in ways to the amorality of the characters on Seinfeld, except... Uh, it's not as broad in terms of comedy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, I think it's a very good show, and everybody should watch it. Okay. Good. All cool. right. Well, that's uh, kind of it uh, for right now. Uh, tell, them, tell them where they can find you. Well, I'm on Twitter, at Culture Blaster, one word, and you can hear our uh, tete a -tets and read stuff at Michael Snyder's Culture Blast on the Facebook and uh, that'll be it until we come back next week with more stuff. All right. And that's, uh, that's it for now. There's more Gabnet coming right up.